Hello SGD, I'm going to split these videos uh, up into two parts because I want to look at stone softening with plants or with chemicals. It's a common theme, so whether it's especially in Peru, but also be connected uh, to Egypt as well. But they couldn't have done this with these primitive hand tools, therefore stone softening. Well, where does, these, where does the legend come from? What other stories surrounding that? And what's going on? So uh, places... Um, uh, Machu Picchu, Oliatambo, Saxawayman, and these other places in uh, Peru especially. And of course that little stone there on the bottom left is a modern sculpture, it's not an oops art. Anyway, um, uh, places like Aswan Quarry in Egypt and the scoop marks, and again this it's totally unreasonable that this could have been done by hand tools has been demonstrated, therefore must be stone softening and all based on what exactly where does the story come from so we look at places like Machu Picchu, Oliantambo, Saxawayma and these types of stones again must have been chemically softened and there are legends uh, telling of this well first part I want to go through what these legends actually are and where they come from and then in part two I'm going to offer a explanation of what the plant actually is and how it was actually used and spoiler alert it's not magical chemistry going on here because pla uh, granite um, and basalt especially they got a very unique chemical signature so the stone softening plant chemistry is not just this undiscovered technology it it rewrites all of established science in type, you know, in geology and, and, and chemistry in the way that it operates. But we'll get to that. Okay, where do these stories of the stone softening come from? There is Hiram Abiff was told this. Uh, Hiram Abiff, Hiram Bingham was told this, uh, but they mainly come through Percy Harrison Fawcett and his son Brian, uh, an explorer. He they did a movie about him. I was at 2016 as well. He disappeared in Brazil looking for the lost city of Z. And uh, now, where do these sources come from? Now, as is so often the case with just in the general ancient aliens lost technology, you'll f you'll find that it gets repeated so often. But where does the source? It's like all well, these things are all precision. Where? Oh well, Christopher Dunn. Okay, and you go and look at Christopher Dunn's work and all of it now. There's no evidence for that. Well, this is how it works with this type of thing. So, could Peruvian soften stone? Uh, one interesting theory put forward to explain shaping stones. So, emerges from legendary uh, Percy Fawcett. Uh, able to track it. Well, it's actually rewritten by Brian Fawcett. And so, here there is some of the story. So, let's look through these stories and these tales. Now, the first one is the bird story. And let's just break that down. Okay, and you can, links in the description, you can read, pause and read the whole thing. But let's start with the bird story. So a small bird like a kingfisher makes it ne its nest in neat round holes in rocky escarpments above the river. Nesting holes conveniently placed for them and so neatly hollowed as though with a drill. Uh, they rub the leaves in a circular motion over the surface. After three or four repetitions, they drop the leaves and start pecking at the place with a sharp sharp beak so just rubbing this leaf softens the stone and then they're able to create these nests uh, they would soon open a round hole in the stone it took several days um, opened out holes deep enough to contain their nests believe me a man couldn't drill a neater hole they know of a leaf legend tells they know of a leaf with a juice that can soften up rock till it's like wet clay so magic it is, it's a, uh, that's not be a uh, mysterious plant that can soften stones used by birds to make their nests. All right, now it's a, um, a bird like a kingfisher. So this is a Peruvian, well, one of native to Peru, a ring of kingfisher. It's like a kookaburra type of bird. Now, one of the first things would be, oh, bank swallows, sand martins. These migrate to Peru, but these actual nests here in the riverside rocky escarpment um, uh, or, and sand banks are actually in Canada. So this is in Ontario, but these birds do migrate to Peru, but they don't nest there. But there are Peruvian swallows and uh, others, you know, and swallows chew up all this dirt and stuff and then they spit out and they make these very nice, neat round holes. So it would appear to be stone as well. We'll get a little bit further, but nesting holes 
you know, circular like with a drill. Um, but there are uh, cave swallows, I think is the term. Uh, there are a few um, Peruvian native swallows who nest in Peru and on banks and like rocky type banks as well. They do make their nests and they make these artificial geopolymer <laughs> nests, let's call them. And well, they need to, they usually will make the nests and then bring in leaves, and, but there are also examples of swallows, such as you can see on the right there. Well, maybe, okay, but I don't think it is swallows, but this was one line worth thinking about. But let's go a little bit further. So they take these leaves, they rub it on the stone, it dissolves the stone, that they can then peck away at it. So for some reason, this more, I gotta say, magic chemical doesn't uh, destroy their beaks and all this stuff, but it does attack the minerals in the stone. Uh, first thing will be, well, the military civilian industry would be jumping over themselves to find a chemical that could do this. Imagine, like, military, well, we've got a chemical, we can get into bunkers just by throwing some liquid at it and just letting it dissolve away. Let's say, even if these birds are now extinct or yet undiscovered, then the drill perfectly circular nests should still be around well digging a little bit deeper there isn't it uh, the bird is not extinct and it is still around and it begins with a small bird like a kingfisher ringed kingfisher well this is the andean flicker which is a type of woodpecker so unlike a short beak swallows these birds who nest in peru have a longer beak and match their size and okay very close like a kingfisher. Here are some of their nests. So in even in adobe buildings they do the same things, but they're going for softer stones and they do make these nests in there. There's another example. So these birds are still around and well we'll get to that. Uh, and they also of course like a woodpecker they do nest, uh, make their very nice neat holes in wood as well. So I don't always tell story for the birds, but this one is, uh, yeah, uh, there's a very obvious explanation here. And even if these, there were these other birds that did do this, then and they've gone extinct since the early 1900s, uh, then the, the, their nests should still be around. But we still have these, well, these birds exist, so this story is, <laughs> eh, you know. All right, the second story that we have, the, the story of the spurs. So, you know, the spurs, these things on the back of the cowboy boots. Uh, so shorten that story down, Englishman whose reliability I cannot doubt told me a story that may, may throw some light on it. Uh, he took a short work for, walk, for, sh he took a shortcut through a strip of forest he had never before penetrated, wearing riding breeches, top boots and big spurs. Not the little English kind, but the great Mexican spurs four inches long. After a hot and difficult walk through thick bush, he was amazed to find that his beautiful spurs were gone, eaten away somehow. He got to his destination. The guy asked him if by any chance he had walked through a certain plant about a foot high with dark reddish leaves. Yes, well, that's, what eaten, that's what's eaten your spurs away. That's the stuff the Incans use for shaping stones. The juice will soften up rock like it's paste. Uh, when they come to look for a place, they couldn't find it. So this chemical will chew up stone as it, as according to the legend you just got to rub the leaf on the stone and just by walking again just the leaf not the processed concentrated chemical just the chemical from the leaf will eat up stone but it'll also dissolve steel or iron or maybe they bronze but metal and in a very short time so this is how the legend goes so riding breech be riding breeches top boots and big spurs Giant, and these are only about an inch and a half, two inch. So he was wearing these the super giant ones, all right? It wore him down to a nub in this rather short walk. Uh, even if he was going at a slow speed, he's walking five miles, uh, really slow, three hours, probably an, an hour more like, uh, two hours maybe in this time. And he only walked through this patch of plant for a short part of the time. Okay, so, but why didn't it eat the, the whole, the, the chain and all those other, just, just the spurs were eaten, and they were eaten, four inches was carved down to essentially nothing, and yet the rest of us, but anyway, let's go a little bit further. So why didn't, why weren't this, all the other stuff chewed away? 
wearing riding breeches and top boots. Um, that's what ate your spurs away. So it dissolves rock and metal, but not organic matter like skin or boots. And um, it, animals or insects could pass through this bush uh, and what, they wouldn't get chewed up. This has the perfect effect. This bush should be everywhere because it would destroy all its predators. There would be no competition. Uh, the, the soil would be so chemically rich that yeah, nothing would live there. So just in coming in contact with the plant, not the concentrated chemical, just the plant dissolves. So this is like xenomorph blood, acid for blood. And then when they went back to look for it, they couldn't find it. So, well, why did, couldn't they find it? Well, it doesn't exist. All right, uh, now let's review that story a little bit. So the full story, more deep. His horse was going lame one day. He left it at a neighbouring chakra, a farmhouse, I suppose, about five miles away from his home and then walked home. The next day he walked over to get his horse and took a shortcut through a strip of forest he had never before penetrated. So he was wearing big spurs, not the little ones. All right, so um, you left your horse there, you walked home, the next day you walked back, but this time you decided to go through a shortcut that you've never been through. And uh, instead of carrying your giant four inch spurs, you, you're gonna take a roughly five mile walk through a forest like this, wearing spurs. Uh, you wouldn't have made it a, every few feet these things would have been caught up and tripped over there's roots vines and all this other stuff um, going on there this is you know and then you found then this magical plant that can dissolve steel which has this like you know even the dim uneducated person would realize the potential of this plant for all sorts of things you know military industrial um, just as a show off to you know go on the carny circuit and look you know oh sir show me a bit look oh I'm gonna, I'm gonna dissolve this away um, took the shortcut wearing spurs through a forest then you realized oh this plant was the thing that did it so you went back to look for it and you couldn't find it so it's essentially on a shortcut a straight line from your house to this other guy's house you couldn't find it you didn't think to go back and forth a few times the path was only so wide. So, um, yeah, yeah, this, this is a, this st just, all right. So this story, the spur story, you need to put an IOU note in between the R and the S of the spurs because it is entirely spurious. Okay, next one, the drinking story. So again, links, pause to read the whole, Thing. what's the drinking story so these um, and this goes this is also a Brian Fawcett the son of Perry Fawcett account uh, old Inca or pre-Inca graves to see if we could find anything worthwhile so they're digging in and looking for graves and stuff uh, they found an earthenware jar of about a quart capacity uh, with liquid inside it so some sort of pottery um, jar liquid inside it uh, now they put the jar down on top of a flat top rock and so they challenged one of their local, you know, the local guys. They said, "I oh, drink this. You know, you must drink it. It's this old Inca and his nana. That's poison. I don't want to drink it." And he fought and he struggled and he ran away. They chased after him. Um, the jar was knocked over and broken. In the meantime, its contents forming a puddle on top of a rock. About ten minutes later, I bent over the rock and casually examined this pool of spilled liquid. It was no longer liquid. The whole patch where it had been and the rock under it were as soft as wet cement. It was as though the stone had melted like wax under the influence of heat. So now we have this processed chemical which is in this uh, jar. So well, you couldn't you know, refine it, you would have to refine the grave. But uh, the jar and the seal, the earthenware, were immune to being softened uh, from this over thousands of years. This, this, this is a magic, this is magic chemical. It can attack metal, it can attack rock. But it, uh, you know, these other things, it, it, it doesn't go at... Um, at all not impossible there are certain like acids that will go for dissolve something some types of materials more than others but in the biggest again it's looking a bit uh, and then the, the question would be because they're always talking about softening stone or rock well what type of rock is it um, mudstone 
uh, wood ash stone, limestone, sandstone, conglomerate, granite, andesite, gypsum, some examples. Some stones can be turned into mud with just water or, or a really mild acid because you know, they're all, you know, they all form differently. So, for instance, uh, people have problems with their fish tanks. One of the first things people, uh, the aquarium guys will tell them, do you have rocks in the bottom? What type of rocks are they? Are they limestone? You can test if, if limestone chalk, I think, works the same. A couple, put them in vinegar and you'll see little um, bubbles. It's uh, like uh, carbon dioxide, just like carbonated drinking water. That's how you can test uh, what's going on in limestone. Uh, when they find fossils in stones like limestone, rather than chip away and risk damaging the fossils, they put it in a mild acid and leave it in there for months and months and months, and it dissolves the limestone away, but it leaves the fossils behind. But we're talking about 10 minutes here. We're not talking, you know, so you can, limestone, you can dissolve it, but over a very, very um, long time, and even with very aggressive acid, it's not going to happen in 10 minutes later. So this drinking story, it's, it's a drinking story. And when it comes to Machu Picchu, Oli and Tumba, so it's basically granite and andesite or basalts. Now, uh, it just doesn't, even with um, that super, it's a hydrofluoric acid, they use that. Well, it's, again, it's not going to happen in, in 10 minutes, even with the most potent of super acids and they if you get them on your skin or you know you're you've you've gone um so this again it's very targeted this it's almost like the brian foster cataclysm where the solar burst hits exactly the statue but not the bedrock you know it's you know there's always the possibility but you're we have all of this truckload of known evidence known pr things that we know and, and have been tested and this would throw them all out and so like, it just no all right so the drinking story so suspicious that it's uh it's a drinking story and finally where is the or so this is now these are the origins of this story and you just see them repeated copy pasted over and over again so now we'll look at and the fourth story which is the story from the priest and if you go through all these, you'll just see this the Brian Fawcett, Perry Fawcett uh, story, the blurb about Hiram Bingham being told this. We have some people who allegedly witnessed it, but the the bird story, the drinking story, and the spur story, you know, they just don't add up. Uh, in the next part, when I offer, you know, I'm not just poo pooing it. I'm going to offer an explanation of where this story, where this legend emerged, and that there is a a, a grain of truth in these things, but. Who's the real origin of this? It's uh, Jorge Lira, the priest. It's, it's a story by the priest. So in fact, in 1983, a Catholic priest said he used a technique to achieve the stone softening, but was unable to figure out how to make the stones hard again. First question would be, well, what type of stone? I can soften stone with uh, the right type of stones with water. It'd be, can you do it with andesite and granite or the uh, particular type of limestone at Saxawama? Uh, very old legends from Peru, corrected by the priests of Jorge Lira. Gods once gave the people two gifts of valuable herbs. First being cocoa, which you know, it's good for uh, relieving altitude sickness and also for you know, Peruvian marching powder to keep you working. But the second one turns rocks into a soft and formable mass, apparently communicated via Andean woodpecker. So... Yes, that's the woodpecker, and uh, but he uses to drill a nest hole. They still exist. Their nest still exists. Uh, yeah. All right. Now, doing that, he is told that he is told to use a herb to soften the rock material. Inca stonemasons are said to have known the secret. We'll come back to that in part two. Uh, Peruvian, the ancestors of the Inca stonemasons still know this secret, but it's just not what. This is just one of these. Uh, it's been elaborated to a high extent. Now, if you do a search for it, okay, Fava Lira, Peru, and the gotcha bush, because this is the bush he identified as the second gift, which gives people uh, the ability to soften stone. And this is the same, just, you can do other ones, but what we have is copy-paste, 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 copy-paste. It's just been repeated in a slight variation, but again, 14 years. 14 years, study, you know, it identified the gotcha bush, so... 
if you have multiple references, that's a good thing. If you have multiple exact references, well, that then you know you can times zero by ten hundred million gazillion, and it's still going to be zero. And this is what's happened. It's just this: these stories have just been reposted, reposted, copy paste, copy paste. All right. Now there was one, for instance, that uh, a PDF of a hundred pages. Uh, I was going to open up that and read it because you know Lira published his findings on the, the extracts of the Gotcha Shrub, and uh, why didn't I do that? Well, okay, here's the page. Um, yeah, okay, all right. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Okay, so uh, that's why I'm not risking this download to read the hundred pages if I'm. My judgment is wrong that I didn't want to, you know, get diseased by this, uh, well, insanity. Let's just put it, you know, visits off world invasion center with Jesus complex going on. So if I'm wrong, you can go open it and read it, and then maybe there is actual details on what this Jotcha Bush is and how to make it. But uh, no. Uh, now, uh, for instance, again, just blogs repeated over and over. Now, this one is the um, Peru Secrets did Inca Civilization. New plants that melt stones. So here's some, you know, again, 14 years, 14 years. The Jocha Bush carried out the experiment. Look, it's just word for word. The two, they referenced the um, two gifts that were given to the people and allowed them to build that stuff. And then we okay, related a tradition about a species of woodpecker. If someone blocks the entrance to its nest with a piece of rock or iron, it will fetch a rare plant, rub it against the obstacle, causing it to become weak or dissolve. Mm, all right. Legend has it. Legend has a lot of things. You know, uh, I'm Adam and Eve and the rib. Okay. And it also goes on. So there is ancient tradition that the buildings at Great Zimbabwe in Africa were constructed when the stones were soft. This expression is also found among the Maoris. One possible interpretation is that it refers to a method of temporarily stuffing the stones. Okay, um, quarry sap is it called. All f freshly quarried stones contain a certain amount of moisture that makes them easier to work. Freshly, all masons, uh, quarry people sort of know this. You get a fresh piece of rock out of the stone, it hardens up over time. So it's a, it is easier to work. So one interpretation which is not included would be that to talk, yeah, okay. Okay, now, modern experts scoff at anecdotes and traditions such as these. They, are, they argue, how dare they, that the quarries where the Incas cut their stones are known, that the stones can be found in their various stages of preparation. However, the fact that some stones were cut with ordinary tools does not necessarily mean that they all were. A variety of t techniques may have been used. Yes, that's true. Um, now, Reductio ad absurdum, but I think it's appropriate in this case. However, the fact that humans built some highways with ordinary tools does not necessarily mean they all were. Smurfs may have smurfed to smurf with smurf science. Okay, why am I being a bit condescending here? Well, you look at the next one. The profit, proper scientific attitude would be to put these traditions to the test instead of mind, mindlessly dismissing them. No, the proper scientific attitude would be for you to put these traditions to the test rather than scoff at the experts and then ask them to do your work for you. Okay, this is, you know, uh, it's not my job, you know, a bunch of poop on the road. Uh, what their job is, is copy paste. And well, and this is, yeah, this is just a uh, Christopher Dunn, Brian Foster School. Uh, there's another blog, there's a lot of them, but um, God made two gifts of the, so, two gifts of the native plants given to, uh, to the Inca. And then we have a reference in 1983 before dying in an interview for a television program. Father Jorge Lira, a Catholic priest, and he uh, no, discovered a way to soften the stones. He was a real person and he, he knew, obviously, because he wrote the first uh, Quechua in native language to Spanish dictionary. For, four t for 14 years, he studied the legend, uh, identified the Jocha plant, mixed it, treated it with other plants and was able to turn the stone into mud. Well, according to legends, the plant itself does that. So, you, But anyway, let's assume. 
Now, he did manage to demonstrate the softening technique was possible. Well, that's an interesting choice of word, demonstrate. Uh, legend has it, according to sources, I will not include. Joshua Bush, okay. Now, I did manage to say this, and through Google Translate, I was able to get it into English. This is, goes back to 2003. At least there are some references here, but uh, what do we have? Now, this seems to be a mysterious source of the unsourced mysterious river copy paste. Uh, control C, copy, control V, paste. And this, okay, now. We have a few details here, George Bush. All right. Uh, classic Ibero American archaeology was shaken in 1983 when Chinese. Chinese Spanish channel, RTVE, broadcast a television documentary, and there's a little bit of weirdness going on in the translation, in which the author interviewed an unusual character, Father Jorge Lira, a Spanish journalist, or why not, recounts that Father Lira, the pr priest, claimed to have discovered the best kept secret of the in Incas, a plant-based substance capable of softening stone. Uh, so we have the two gifts, coca, and we have Jocha Bush. This has not been identified. Never, they always don't describe what the plant is. Um, it could have been you know, unidentified in the bio, um, in the book, so to speak, but I try to find, and the only really, the only thing that come up was just constant references to what we saw earlier, and one other plant, the Cantua boxifolia, known as a Quantu, Quantus or Quant Tuta, pardon the pronunciation, in Quechua, in Incan, flowering plant, um, magic flower, magic flower of the Incas, magic tree, sacred flower of the Incas, and there is a legend connected to this particular plant as well. But uh, what is Jocha? I don't know. I couldn't find anything. Doesn't mean it doesn't exist, but uh, mm, anyway. So, priest found it. And then we have the four, you know, uh, this seems to be the origin of a 14 years copy paste, copy paste. Claims, he carried out experiments back in 1983. Okay, we didn't have uh, cameras. Well, there were cameras back in 1983. Not everyone was carrying a phone, but the, uh, there were, there was photographs, there was, you know, journals and stuff, but he softened the plant. He couldn't get it back. He considered it a failure. But what we have is really, uh, sources do trust me or trust me bro control can is confirmed with control copy paste you know this is uh, going through this and I looked at this years ago and now I'm just coming back at it and it's this is so often the case with all of these alternative you know science type of things is a blurb an anecdote a legend somewhere and all legends, you know, every story has, you know, legend speaks of. Now, every story, no matter how it lands, has a grain of truth to it, and that grain might be so minuscule as to be irrelevant. But I think that there is a grain of truth to this, and that it's just now, you know, over time become exaggerated. Uh, also, because things like lifting heavy objects uh, and working stone still in this day seem, uh, are seen as mysterious, unexplainable to the layman. It's like, this is anti-gravity that he's lifting this stone. Or how did he move this? It must be anti-gravity levitate. He must have sunk to the stone to lift it. Pulleys and levers and mechanical... Oh, no, that's, that's ridiculous. But you know. So this this plant came in it. It's not just... If it did exist, it would rewrite everything that we know. It, it was it essentially it's a magic plant, like, like literal magic, because it can do things that we, all the things that we understand and that we can test and repeat. We, it, this would just break them. So, for those who you know, modern scientists, experts scoff at these uh, at these legends, and just well do this, you know. You have a responsibility, you know, if, if not only is this important for, you know, learning the truth, you're going to be rich as, you know, you're going to have, they were throwing gold at you to get access to this, you know, secret ancient knowledge that you get, and apparently you just got to get a plan and rub it. Um, anyway, 
Now, is there a grain of truth? I think there is a grain of truth to it, and that grain is built on people misunder- you know, seeing these arts and trades and crafts of old and like not understanding them, trade secrets that people keep. Uh, his, is this, are they softening stone here with a magical plant? Well, maybe, they, yes, yes, they are. I'm telling you they are because copy-paste. Um, so we have Machu Picchu, Alantambo, Saxawayman. We have a place called Loliok there at the top. Part two will be, well, where does this actually, is there a reasonable practical that Incan stone masons still use? Uh, Saxawayman, just over the side, we have, pardon the pronunciation again, Caratera Lali Plata, Plata, all right, there's the site there. So this will be the next part. I think there's a really good explanation uh, for this. A grain of truth in all these legends, but the actual stone softening one, um, using this plant or this chemical, is, yeah, it's based on anecdotes that are just like so... uh, If you were to present this, you know, if this was used as evidence, so not just presenting it in one... Imagine if this this was the type of evidence presented against you in a trial. Um, so it's interesting, you know, like, yeah, if, good for, if I was to, you know, if I was to use this level of reason and logic and say, well, maybe, you know, you're a murderer and a crook and uh, this is my level of, you know, anecdotal, you know, look, I've got an anecdote here, you know, never mind that the anecdote makes no sense. Um, yeah, you know, so there's got to be some reason and lot logic to, to things, and these things can just be, well, obviously, uh, the want to believe these things is much stronger than the want to examine these things and try to uncover them. It's, you know, um, mystery and requires faith. Uh, very, well, the mystery industry, requ- you know, requires faith, and faith is based on we'll never have proof now i understand that you know i'm more of a i'm not a uh, i'm not a religious person but i'm not i'm not an atheist either but you know like when that that's the argument will scientifically prove god well you can't because it's not about say it's a it's a matter of, of faith and science there's no business in that particular area we all have preconceptions but you know uh, no one's a Vulcan it would be a terrible world if people were like I'm based on on pure pure logic in that sort of way but uh, for selling you know got to have some standards for how, uh, and these are just yeah um, pardon the French but these are bull manure <laughs> and they're so transparently bull manure um, stories as well and if this is yeah Stone and quarrying, oh, no, that's ridiculous with tools. You know, well, what's the what's the opposite? Um, what's your evidence on the other side? So again, it's a bit like, well, why do scientists scoff at this? Um, ex- ex- experts, air quotes, uh, scoff at this, you know, but the proper scientific attitude would be for other people to do my, you know, I, I have some, I hear some legend and then everyone must go and, you know, spend months and, and years and possibly millions of dollars to do my work for me. No, no, sweetheart, they don't. You know, you've got to do, um, and if you're going to poo poo people in this sort of way, well, you're going to get it right back and deservedly so. Uh, this is, you know, yeah, copy paste. That's the basis of this. And part two, we'll look at it a little bit further. You know, and there is a good, viable explanation for this that doesn't require uh, magic fairy dust type of um, explanation. With that, SGD, cheers and have a good one.